Kovalyov wakes one morning and finds that his nose has disappeared and that in its place there's only this pancake smooth flat expanse. What he keeps on referring to in the story as that ridiculous blank space again. And the story is simply his attempt to trace and replace his nose and get it back onto his face. And he starts off by going to a coffee shop to think what to do and while he's in the coffee shop he thinks he recognizes someone crossing the road going into a house. About two minutes later, the nose really did come out. It was wearing a gold braided uniform with a high standing collar and chamois trousers. It had a sword at its side and from the plumes on its hat, one could tell that it held the rank of state councillor. This is about four ranks higher than collegiate assessor. <laughs> so the next question is, how is Kovalyov going to address his nose? labyrinth. There are emissaries from the outside world that are lodged immutably within us. And then the question is, how much of the outside world do we need inside us to make sense of it? So you have a series of torn black shapes, for example. And how much is it about a generosity of viewing and how much is it about an inability of ourselves to stop seeing a shape, a face, a form, a horse? I mean, this pressure for meaning that we have inside us is like when we finish the sentences for someone else. And we, we do this literally when someone stops in mid-sentence. We finish the sentence for them. But even as they are all talking in normal ways, there's a way we are predicting the end of what they're going to say as if we're sending an emissary around the corner, seeing the future and coming back to report to us what is about to arrive. And with this pressure for meaning and this latching onto the world comes a latching onto it even into fragmentary form, even to ideas as they start to disappear. So we do this with ideas, we do this with images, and we do it with ideals. So that even as utopia starts to disappear and becomes fragmented, we hang on to it as if we would recreate it through wish, through a will, through a desire. And even as the horse starts to get more and more fragmentary and is reduced to the single stick of a hobby horse, we hang on to that stick and to that image as a hand to a saving banister. Even as the horse gets reduced to a single line, we still see within it the whole form of Rosinante.